Hey everybody, Coach here. So glad you had time to join with me here today and go over one of those lesser known parts of landscape elements. We're here to talk about ambiance today and how does ambiance fit in to landscapes, small and big. Doesn't always have to break the bank to have these things. So join me here today and let's get into landscape ambiance. We'll be right back. Roll that intro. Hey, this week we're talking about landscape ambiance, and it's not a part of landscaping a lot of regular folk think about. You know, having come from uh, the construction designing part of uh, the green industry, and also, especially in retail management, in nursery work, I was really, really in tune and focused to trends that were out there in the green industry and what people saw and what people wanted, what people needed as well. So when we're talking about ambiance, this is not for the rich and famous. This is not something that's gonna break the bank every single time you think about it. With a little bit of planning, a little bit of budgeting, you can have several to all of these big seven that I'm gonna talk about. The first one I wanna talk about, I'm gonna cover in much shorter detail because I just covered it last week in last week's video. Check it out. Put a card up right here for you, okay? It's all about water features. You know, when it comes to water features, it's probably at the top of my ambiance category without even thinking about it. There's nothing, nothing more in an element of landscaping that will naturalize your yard and bring in wildlife, songbirds, hummingbirds, all kinds of things to your yard just with the sound of water. Not to mention that, that cool off effect that you get with running water, you know, near and at your front door. Water features come in a variety, and I mean boatload size variety of costs, of fanciness, detail and construction, and the all, the all bottom line is the cost overall. If you want to know more about water features, please check out that video. But water features, I found the two that I used and the last two that I installed was the, the standalone type of water features and the pondless waterfalls for folks. It gave them the most for the least amount of money. So they had the sounds, they had the ambiance, they had the lighting, they had everything you could get from a water feature without the tremendous costs that go along with some of the bigger ponds, some of the bigger statuary, and some of the bigger uh, monolithic style of water features that are out there. So, water features. Numero uno in my book as far as creating an environment and ambiance in the backyard. Hey, let's look at number two. Number two is something just a little bit different and not everybody has it. How about sound? Now we talked about water feature sound. Yes, that's a natural sound, but what about bringing out your favorite music out into the yard via outdoor type of sound systems? Now there's still the old standby wired ones that are out there that do really a really good job and they're hardwired so they're very reliable. You generally attach them to the house themselves, either like on the fascia boards, or you can put them on posts and stuff of patio covers and structures. You can, you can wire them in there. Or nowadays, with Bluetooth wireless capabilities, you can place them in faux rocks out in the garden that are weatherproofed and Bluetooth to your phone or to a stereo system in the house. And you can have this beautiful surround sound environment out there if you're uh, entertaining family and friends just relaxing out there and i'll cover another part of this ambiance element too with sound in just a few minutes but man if you if you have that type and you start as you will see as i'm talking here you start combining these various ambiance elements you really gooch up the enjoyment and that staycation feeling that you can get from being just in your own backyard. Okay, so sound elements, very, very uh, interesting and unique type of ambiance element that you can put in your yard. Pretty simple. 
You can do it during construction if you're doing an initial landscape or a makeover where you can put the, the stereo speaker wire, the outdoor rated stereo speaker wire, you can put it right in the trenches next to your irrigation, drainage, under the patios, under through sleeves that you've put underneath the patios and walkways, and you can run it to wherever you want it to go. Okay, so hey, let's look at another one. One that you don't see a whole lot, but I've put in probably about a half a dozen of them over the years and that is cooling and misting systems. You know, can you imagine if you, if you live in the warmer climes of our country or world and you have uh, really hot summers and say you're gonna throw a birthday party, you know, in the evening or a dinner engagement out on the back patio, you had something like a cooling and misting system. There is something that creates an environment and an ambiance that makes it comfortable of being outside. And they're not really hard to put together at all. I mean, they come in kits. You can find them uh, that you have to put them together, kind of like you know, a little little kit, and attach them to either existing water feature or existing water source, or you can pre-plumb it when you're doing construction phase, and you can have a stub somewhere with a valve where you just connect it up there. And you've often seen these when you're when you're dining at restaurants and stuff, or you have uh, outdoor type of events like concerts and that kind of stuff. They'll have them there for customer comfort and also ambiance. It's just a unique environment when you walk by on the sidewalk and you have this outdoor dining area that has this drapery of mist falling down it's really kind of neat it really is and it's not enough because it usually evaporates before it hits the ground but it does cool the air and mix it around the the people in that environment so check that out cooling and misting systems it really works well and it's special you know, you, you invite somebody over after you put one of those up and you said, boy, it's kind of warm out tonight. I don't know if we're going to be outside. She says, oh, I got a solution for that. Let's try this. And bam. Okay. Hey, moving on. Let's look at another one. Now we've talked about water features. Okay. We've talked about sound. And now we've talked about cooling and misting. Let's look at another favorite of mine and probably in the top three. And that's low voltage outdoor lighting. One of the paramount things that people have wanted in the yards that I've designed for oh well over the 20 year mark. And we have come quite a ways in the style and the, especially the lighting, the bulb lighting. We've gone from incandescent lights that drew quite a bit of wattage and we had to create systems allowing for that wattage. And now we've gone over into LED lights that draw next to nothing. And that has put a tremendous paradigm shift on how we put in uh, lighting systems now. You don't need gigantic, ginormous transformers and three and four and five trails of 12-2 or 10-2 cable all over the yard. Now we can do maybe one cable, two cables, and you're good. A 300 watt transformer or less will generally take care of the whole yard now. When it used to be six, nine, even 1200 watt transformers back in the day when I first started putting them in. Lighting really takes, like I said, the combination of things from the water feature, from the cooling and misting, from the outdoor uh, living areas, and gently and creatively lighting up the landscape and the pathways and patios with up lighting, down lighting, path lights. All of these type of elements really put a mood, a mood to a backyard and a front yard. And there's one other aspect that maybe you don't think about when you think about low voltage lighting, and that is home security. Home security, where you've lit up the backyard, the front yard, and especially those dark side yards where maybe you have a pathway or something or a dog run, and you've been able to put up those, those low voltage, less intense type of lighting, but it's obvious to people who have bad intentions that the place is all lit up and they don't wanna be discovered. You know, it's a lot better than the high intensity motion detectors all the time, unless you truly have movement in there, and then those type of security features will be enacted. But think about it, low voltage lighting. I love the education I got back in the um, early part of this century. I think it was about 2003. I was invited to go to a one week university course at the nightscaping uh, 
lighting company down in Redlands, California. And we went into in depth how to lay out, how to wire, how to estimate voltage drop and all the little accoutrement that went along with a lighting system. And I really felt confident. When I went back, I did a lot of lighting jobs for all the landscapes that I did. There weren't too many that I didn't have lighting in. And though the fixtures, oh my gosh, you know, the sky's the limit. I can remember having a, I remember having one job in Sutter Creek, California, and I'll leave the customer's name out, but we had a huge lighting system, front yard and backyard, and they had a three acre piece of property. And we landscaped about an acre and a half of it. And it had lighting throughout. And we're talking fixtures, guys, of $450 a piece, 450 and there was no less. Those are for the path lights. The stand, push them in the ground on the stake and they stood there, $450, and we had no less than 20 of them, 20 in that project. And that was only the path lights. There was probably 50 accent and up lights on trees, both new and existing. There was down lights on the patio structure that was installed, so we had nice lighting, uh, mood lighting down on the, the patio. So alone, the landscape lighting can be the Taj Mahal or something down to simple solar lights. And I warn you about the solar lights. They don't last a long time. Uh, after hard water from sprinklers, uh, years of service out in the elements, if you get, if you get uh, good production out of those things after three years, consider yourself lucky. But to start them off, hey, it's a good place to get started if you want something for layout purposes, shall we say. Okay, so one of the key elements, especially when you combine like water features and lighting, holy cow, you create a huge mood out there in the evening hours. Hey, let's move forward. Another one, another one that can be super simple or super complicated, depending on what your skill level, your checkbook, and your time and energy can create and that is fire pits. Fire pits are all the rage and have been for the last 15 years. Uh, if they're allowed in your area, especially if you're within city limits, uh, they can create both the natural campfire effect where you can, where you can burn wood that you've brought in, you know, or you've bought in. Um, you can do Duraflames to make it super simple, uh, all the way up to piping uh, propane or gas lines to the area and, and doing a, a gas ring with a glass top and just really mm, gooching it up. Uh, I prefer, honestly, since I'm an outdoorsman type of guy, I really prefer the natural fire pit with uh, some good oak or uh, uh, crackling cedar, whatever you have. Just make sure that you have surroundings that are safe for it no matter what you do. And you know, keep an eye on the little ones. You know, fire pits can be made as, as simple as some large boulders in a circle with a good sand base. Call it good. That's what I had at Weed Patch Ranch. Uh, we had something that was just nice enough to sit out in front of, and we could throw a grate over on one side, cook a steak. Uh, we did some baking of bread around a fire pit at one time. It was fantastic. And just a little ways away was the pondless waterfall. So we'd have it running with the fire pit going and a little bit of mood sound out on the patio. And there you go. There's your voila. There's the, the ambiance that we were looking for. And it made for a great example and great advertising for the business. So think about fire pits. You can pick them up at box stores and like uh, the stone block kits with the drop-in metal insert. You can uh, YouTube things and look at masonry walls with brick and stucco and you, you could, the sky's the limit. You know, it's just one of those things that only your imagination will be your limitation. So fire pits are a great element to incorporate with other things that we've already talked about. And I think you're starting to see a pattern there, aren't we? Yeah, little use more than one to accentuate and to intensify the ambience that you have. We just finished one for my sister-in-law up in Idaho, and it was one of the simple drop-in ones uh, that you got at the box store on a pallet. And we assembled it with some simple grading and leveling, put some sand down, nestled the blocks into the circle required, and dropped in the stainless steel um, burning ring that goes in it. Bam! Great family gatherings, probably a dozen of them over the, the course of this last summer. And she loves it. She absolutely loves it.
So let's move on. We're going to shift gears just a little bit. And now we're going to talk about whimsy and garden art. This is a very personalized part of your landscape. This is something where you bring in your personal taste and you really put your signature on it. Anyone can have a water feature, but when you talk about garden whimsy and art and stuff, you're bringing in your personal flavor to it. And when we talk about this, I have really seen some doozies in my career. I have seen someone who took all their hunted game heads and hung them out on the fence. Things like deer, elk, bear, uh, those kinds of trophy heads and put them on the, put them on the back fence. I have seen uh, just crazy colors, crazy colors as far as decorations on back walls and back and side fences. I have seen huge 30 foot streamers on poles and I have seen of crazy ones, I've seen the ones where people have created outdoor bedrooms and then lined the whole inside of the bedroom with mirrors everywhere. That was a little touch and go going on that consultation and uh, <laughs> needless to say, uh, the lady that was going to hire us, yeah, she, she blushed a little bit, but I don't, I, who am I to say, you know, that was their personal touch on their backyard and it was just to the side of their hot tub area. You know, when you do this kind of thing, you can use things like garden art when it comes to, uh, statues, uh, copper statues, windmills, garden gnomes, specific colors that you might want, uh, you know, Use your imagination and bring your creativity to it. I think it should be tasteful. I think it should be uh, non-permanent when it comes to this, because if you do decide to sell, you know, you might want to have the ability to reverse it so you can appeal to the masses as far as sale. But while you're there, you know, put your personal touch on it and, and enjoy it. Uh, what you like when you're 30, you may totally change around and do something totally different by the time you're 40 as you go through phases of life. Your taste might change a little bit. Yep, when you talk about garden whimsy and art, you, you start to really uh, put that signature on there of just you. All right, moving forward. Next one is going to be the relaxation area. And this is where we really start to draw all the elements of ambiance together and you create a very intense and micro portion of your backyard. And this is not part of your yard that is uh, for the general public. I used to design them when it was right off the master bedroom door or slider. And it would be kind of an enclosed area that was either decoratively screened off with, with greenscape or it was done literally with a decorative fence area. And it basically was a private area for the owner to go out there and relax amongst intimate settings. And when I say that, a combination of maybe a water feature in the corner, small, not overwhelming, just small. Um, another part of the relaxation area is I always designed uh, swings or hammocks into it. Uh, we had sound, uh, we had hot tubs. So someone could go out there on, uh, say like a Saturday evening after you've entertained friends and it's nine o'clock and people have gone home and you go, whew, man, you know, entertaining is a lot of work. And before you went to bed, you went out there, you crawled into the hammock or you jumped in the hot tub on a warm summer evening and you just chilled and you just enjoyed say 30 to an hour and then you were able to go in and just crash like a log. It is your personal intimate space. And it's really important to have something like that. You know, when you have uh, kids and family and everything in this day and age is so huckily buck, can you not think of a better landscape element and a better sense of ambiance than knowing full well that you have that escape pod that you can go crawl into and relax? I can remember designing a couple of hammock areas that uh, swung over a small pondless micro pondless waterfall and they had wireless speakers on the fences and the lady who was a physician she would come home she would crawl into the hammock she'd break out the kindle she would read for a half hour she had a uh, yoga mat on the the hot tub pad that was a little bigger than the hot tub the hot tub was eight by eight and she had probably another eight by eight area and that's where she did her 
uh, yoga, and that's where she did her meditation. And she really, really enjoyed it. And after a couple of years, I lost, I lost touch with the customer, but I'm sure that they used it for several years, and I hope they still do. You know, it's been about, I don't know, 12, 13 years since we put that one in. So, uh, yeah, relaxation area, where you start combining these elements that I've talked about and placing them in an intensified spot to really gain all the benefits from it, all the benefits. Hey, I am... I am hoping that what you got from this maybe just uh, broaden your horizons a little bit, maybe uh, rose your level of awareness of what could be. You know, don't go busting the bank on this if it's something that you know you can't do right now. But maybe you can put some of the infrastructure in initially, and then as time and resources allow, you can bring them to fruition by, hey, I already put that sleeving in. Hey, I already got that wire in. Hey, I've already got the electrical run to that, that small intimate patio area. I haven't got the fence up yet. I haven't got the hot tub, but I got at least the conduit underneath the pad, etc. This is how you plan landscape ambiance out, just like any other landscape project. Do not willy-nilly this. It's just as important if you want it. Getting these kinds of things come from planning, budgeting, budgeting from like uh, a little extra savings, maybe a little extra borrow, uh, certainly, certainly doing it yourself. Doing it yourself if you have the capabilities, both mental and physical, to do it. It is so rewarding to have these little extra things. And those times that we live in right now, would you not ever see the importance behind this more than ever? to have that ability to have your little weekend staycation right there in your own backyard. You don't have to go to a spa. You don't have to go to a resort. You don't have to go to the ocean. You don't have to go to the mountains because you've got all of them right there. So, and make them safe for the kids, especially those water features. Make sure the 12 volt transformers are out of the area where they don't have to meddle with those things. And always, always, if you have hot tubs, make sure they're covered and strapped and locked. You don't want anybody crawling in there. Hey, my name is Matt. You can call me Coach. Don't forget to visit the podcast every week along with our YouTube channel. And if you have not yet, if you haven't got it yet, and you're starting to think about a landscape project for later this winter or spring, check out the 15-step DIY checklist that I put together for you guys, along with the audio podcast that accompanies it. You can check it out right in the email below. Email me, and I answer every email personally. Thank you for taking the time. Thanks for staying with me the whole entire video. Click a like button for me, will you? Tell a friend and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you next Friday. Check out Plan of the Week as well. Thank you again. Take care.